This file discusses something interesting, very interesting, but at the same time a bit tricky. And uh, the reference that I've used for this part is a book titled Matter and Interactions, Part 2, Electric and Magnetic Interactions by Shabi, Shabay and Sherwood. So let's review some um, concepts first before we get started. Uh, one thing is the chapter on Gauss's law that you've done before. We showed that if you put extra charge inside a conductor, the extra charge, in this case negative charge, will go to the surface. In equilibrium, it will be located at the surface. And also in equilibrium, the charge is located at the surface, but also the electric field inside the conductor is zero. Also, we've, we know from before the principle of superposition. If you have many charges in space, and you want to get the total electric field at a point in space, you just get the electric field due to each charge as if the other charges don't exist, and then you add them. The other thing, the last thing is a bit uh, tricky also. We haven't discussed this at all in the course, but we'll just briefly discuss it now. If you have a charge at an old position here, and then you move it to the new position right here, and you want to observe the effect at some point over here. Will the effect happen straight away? I mean, if the old electric field was, cert was a certain value, and you want to now see what the new electric field would be when the charge moved to a new position, will the electric field change instantaneously? Or will it take time for this change to happen? It turns out that it takes time. And the time it takes is the amount of time for light to propagate for, from this point to this point. So of course it happens at a very fast, it's very fast, the effects happen very fast, but it, there is some finite time, it doesn't happen instantaneously. There's a simulation here that you can look at, if you can go to this website to see how this um, issue happens exactly. So let's see what we want to do. We want to take a circuit, this, these are some wires, and we're just looking at the cross section. And this, the wires, of course, are neutral before you connect a battery. And we want to see when you connect a battery and you connect and you close the circuit, how does an electric field become established inside the wires? That's the question we're trying to find, figure out. So first, we'll put a battery and see what putting the battery does with the gap open. And then we'll close the gap and we'll see how an electric field is established in the circuit when the, when the circuit is closed. So let's imagine you have this kind of strange battery where you have a conveyor belt and the conveyor belt means that there's something rotating here and as it rotates it grabs negative charges from one side and delivers them to the other side. This is not something fantasy, it, there is something like this actually, the Van de Graaff generator behaves exactly like this, so it's not something that cannot be cannot happen in reality. I just wanted to make a mechanical picture so that you can imagine how things happen. So you take negative charges from here, it pumps negative charges from one side and, po and uh, positions them on the other side. Due to this shift in charge, you're going to have some extra positive charge on the left and some extra negative charge on the right. The positive charge will make an electric field inside the wire. The negative charge will make an electric field towards the negative charge also inside the wire. It will start to do that. We, the, the F other is the force due to the other forces that are trying to move the charge opposite the way it wants to go. Once uh, an amount of negative charge here is established and here positive, the negative charges don't want to go to the right. They want to go to the left. So you have to apply a force due to some external agent or some kind of force to make the charges go opposite the way they want to go. And F E is the force due to the electric field that's due to these charges and these charges. So different batteries have different ways that they can do this. Uh, some batteries work with a chemical reaction. Some batteries work uh, sources of uh, they work with this conveyor belt uh, method. So there are different ways that this can happen. But the net effect is the same: that a battery tries to take charges from one side and deliver them to the other. So after some time, by moving more and more negative charges, the charges go to the surface. We know that extra charge likes to go to the surface and there's going to be a gradient in charge. So here there's little bit of charge, here there's more charge 
and here there's more positive charge density and here there's a bit less charge density and an electric field will be established in the wires during the initial time that the battery is existing in the circuit. As time goes on again more and more charge will build up and notice also there's a gradient in charge density. More charge density here, less charge density here and less charge density here. Now why when you have a tr difference in charge density in different locations why does that make a net electric field inside the wire? Imagine you have a sheet, a ring of positive charge and the ring has a very high charge density. And then you have another ring of charge here, but with a lower charge density. Both of them are positively charged, but this one has much more higher density of charge and this one has a less density of charge. Then the electric field we've taken before the problem of the ring. The, the electric field along the axis of the ring is going outward away from the charge for this charge and it's a large value. The electric field is large because the charge density is large. This positive charge will make an electric field opposite away from the positive charge and opposite this one but of a lower value because the charge density is lower. So the net effect electric field in the, inside the wire will be pointing to the right in this particular case in the regions of the wire where you have a higher negative charge density and a lower negative charge density along the wire like this then the, the higher density negative charge will make an electric field towards the negative charge with a large value and the lower density negative charge will make an electric field towards the negative charge with a lower value and then the net effect electric field will be also to the left here it will be to the left pointing towards the direction of the higher density of negative charge so that's what's happening inside the wire here. The reason why you have an electric field here is because of this gradient in charge density on the surface of the wires. And the same thing over here. As time goes on, this, this gradient starts to get reduced. The charge becomes more and more uniform. And at some point, uh, the electric field will be zero inside the wire. The, ch the charge on the surface will be such that the electric field will be zero inside the wire. Remember, in th this is the case when you have electrostatic equilibrium. And this happens because there's a gap here. The circuit is open. So there, there cannot be a current established in the circuit and keep on moving because there's an open part of the circuit here. There's a gap. So the electric field will go to zero. Uh, the charge distribution will be more uniform. It will distribute itself in a way to make the electric field zero inside the wire everywhere. And it will remain in this condition um, until you fill this gap and or you close the circuit. So let's look a little bit more detail in that gap. In the gap there are some positive charges on the left. There are some negative charges on the right. So these are the negative charges. These are the positive charges. And we're going to try to look and see what happens at some representative points on the left side of the wire and some representative points on the right side of the wire due to these positive and negative charges. So for instance, if you want to look at what happens due to these negative charges at those six representative points, well, the negative charge will make an electric field pointing towards the negative charge and it's a large value because this distance is small the same negative charge will make an electric field at these representative points towards the negative charge but it will be of a lower value because the negative charge is farther away th from here. Now the positive charge at the same representative points the positive charge will make an electric, fields, electric field here at these points pointing away from the positive charge and a large value because the charge is close to those points. The positive charge will also make an electric field at these points, these three points, away from the positive charge, but of a lower value because it's farther away from these points. So this is what the charge, the, the electric field uh, looks like due to the positive and the negative charges. The electric field due to the positive charges is the green. The electric field due to the negative charges is the purple. So you can see here that there's going to be some net electric field at th this point due to the positive and negative charges and it's going to point to the left this way and here there's some net electric field in this direction and here there's some net electric field in this direction and here there's some net electric field in this direction and here in this direction and here in this direction so 
what the electric field looks like due to the charges in the gap only. These orange vectors represent the electric field at those six points due to the charges in the gap only. But we know that the electric field inside the wire is zero in equilibrium. So that means that the electric field due to all the other charges on all the parts of the wire except the gap has to be this blue vector. Because remember, if, if at this point the electric field is zero, then the electric field due to the charges in the gap plus the electric field due to all the other charges in the universe, it has to be zero. They have to be equal and opposite. So that means that now we, we can find out that the electric field due to all the charges in all the other parts of the circuit except the gap are these blue electric field vectors. Now if we fill the gap, these charges, the gap charges don't exist anymore. So the orange vectors don't exist anymore. The only thing that exists are the blue vectors, which, is the, which are the electric field vectors due to all the other charges in the wire except for the charges in the gap. Now, since we made the connection, since we filled the gap, there are no charges in the gap. So this is the only electric field that will exist at these representative points. Of course, the charge on the surface, the negative charge on the surface, will start to move towards the left and equalize and become uh, less, uni less non-uniform. Um, but uh, this is not re really important right now. But the, the char there will be a charge distribution on the surface also, right? So basically what we've shown is when the gap is filled, an electric field is going to be established in the region around the gap, near the gap, due to the, the, the change in the charge distribution. There was charge in the gap and now there's no charge in the gap. Now this effect will not be felt by the rest of the circuit instantaneously. It takes time for this effect. Remember we said that when you have a change in the charge distribution, the effect doesn't happen everywhere at the same time. There has to be some delay. It's a very small delay. It could be a very, very, very extremely small amount of time, but the effect doesn't happen instantaneously. So after some time, the, the, due to the fact that now the charges of the gap don't exist, that effect will be felt everywhere else in the circuit after a very, very small amount of time. So you're going to get this non-zero electric field everywhere else in the circuit due to the charges on the surface of the wires because there's no charge, there's no charge now in the gap. And so there's going to be an electric field in the wires and this electric field is due to the non-uniform charge distribution on the surface of the wires and this is what happens in steady state there's a uniform electric field inside the wire as long as of course the wire has the same uh, radius everywhere and a current is established in the wire and it's constant because when you have an electric field inside the wire Remember, there are always free charges inside the wire, and these free charges will start to move opposite the electric field. So you're going to get a constant current established in the circuit, and the current will just keep on going as long as the battery is able to move charges from this side to this side. So the battery moves charges from this side to this side, negative charges. The negative charges flow through the circuit, and then they go around a complete revolution and keep on going as long as the battery can keep on pumping the charges from this side to this side. So this video, it kind of gives an intuitive understanding of how this electric field is established inside the circuit. It, maybe it's not very clear and not many textbooks discuss how the electric field is produced and how it's produced due to surface charges and non-uniform charge distribution on the surface.